Welcome to a short video on multi-Gaussian Kriging for resource estimation. In my opinion, multi-Gaussian Kriging is one of the biggest secrets in the mining industry. Why do a lot of companies or geologists not use multi-Gaussian Kriging for resource estimation? Well, that's a long story and I'll have to tell it to you another time. But let's look at some conditions that we typically encounter for resource estimation. The so drill hole data is generally relatively sparse. And this leads to over smooth estimates of block grades. And generally this also results in block sizes that are much larger than the future selective mining unit. And so the resulting grade tonnage curves are not accurate. These are grade tonnage curves based on the resource model estimates, right? They are poor estimates for mine planning. And so in general, block models, that's resource block models, made with estimated grades that are based on linear combinations of composite data are poor predictors of the tons and grade that will be recovered at the time of mining. Well, let's look at estimation versus simulation. Over on the left column here with the heading reality, in the center column I have a heading called estimation, and on the right this column has a heading of simulation. So we're going to compare estimation and simulation to reality. So in reality we have an ore deposit. We model the ore deposit with estimated values, or we can model it with simulated values and create a block model that way. In reality, we have our sample data from the ore deposit, and for estimation, we estimate sample values at locations where we do not have sample grades. In simulation, we can simulate uh, grades at locations where we do not have sample grades. Now, let's look at the properties of these estimated and simulated grades. First, in reality, we have the mean of all of our samples, and if we decluster it properly and our samples are unbiased, we'll have an unbiased mean of the real value of our ore deposit. In estimation, if we use declustered or an unbiased estimator, such as ordinary Krieging, we will preserve that sample mean and reproduce it. Likewise with simulation, if we do our simulations properly, then we will also preserve the sample mean and reproduce it. How about the sample variance? Variance of our estimated values is not the same as a sample variance, so we have destroyed it. We have not been able to reproduce it. However, for simulation, the simulated values will reproduce the sample variance, um, of the variance as we see in our original sample. So we have preserved the sample variance. How about the shape of the histogram? If we look at the histogram of our estimated values then, we will see it's not the same as the histogram of our sample values. In other words, we have destroyed that as well. However, if we go to simulation and make a histogram of our simulated values, we'll see that it preserved or matches the histogram of reality. Why is the histogram so important? Well, if we think about grade tonnage curves as being values above cutoff, then the shape of the histogram is very important. If the shape is not preserved or reproduced, then the corresponding grade tonnage curves will also be out of, out of whack. They'll be biased. And finally, let's look at spatial continuity. We have a spatial continuity as determined by our samples from real samples. If we look at the spatial continuity or the variogram computed from our estimated values, we'll find it's not the same. Again, we have destroyed our model of spatial continuity with estimation. However, the simulated values do reproduce the spatial continuity or variogram that we see in our sample values. So it looks like simulation is a much better method for preserving all of these statistics uh, than estimation. So how can we take advantage of that fact? Well, we'll go to multi-Gaussian Krieging. And multi-Gaussian Krieging simply simulates composite grades on a very dense grid. And that very dense grid is the grid inside of your resource block or reserve block. And here we have a picture of a reserve block, if you will, and we have discretized that block into a number of points. Here we have nine points. I've represented each of these points as a drill hole composite because when we simulate 
or estimate values at a discretization point, we are actually estimating or simulating a composite grade value. And then we average those together to get a simulated or estimated block value. Okay, so we simply average the simulated composite grades, that's the ones inside the block here, to form a simulated block grade. Simulated composite grades preserve sample statistics. We saw that from the previous slide. And so therefore, the simulated block statistics will also reflect reality. But simulated block grades, and although they are conditional to the data, are not unique. We know from uh, information about conditional simulation that each simulated block value can be a little bit different than the previous one. There's a little bit of a randomness in there. What we will do then is we will simulate each block grade a number of times, let's say 500 times. We can simulate a block grade 500 times in a matter of a couple of seconds with a multi-Gaussian al algorithm. So that's quite practical to do that. And so for each block, the average of the 500 simulated block grades will be equal to the Krieg estimate. That's a property of conditional simulation, correct? The average of a large number of simulated values is equal to the Krieg value. Okay, so now let's consider 1,000 simulated blocks, okay, in our deposit. And let's say each block has been simulated 500 times. And thus we have 1,000 times 500 or 500,000, which is a half a million simulated block grades. The histogram of the 500,000 or half million simulated block grades does not suffer from smoothing. It has the correct shape mean, and variance. And thus the grade tonnage curves of the 500,000 simulated block grades will provide accurate predictions of the tons and grade above cutoff for the current block size. That's really cool. So the advantages of simulated block model grades are as shown here. The block may be any size, no matter what the data spacing is. And thus we can make the block size equivalent to the selective mining unit without suffering from smoothing. If our resource blocks are much bigger than our selective mining unit, we can simply discretize the resource block to the same size of a selective mining unit. It's quite okay to do that. We get good results. And thus the simulated block model grade tonnage curves provide accurate prediction of the tons and grade above cutoff for a block size that would be equivalent to the future selective mining unit. That's what we really want. Boy, is this ever cool. So how do we implement this? Well, we and simulate each block 500 times. The 500 simulated block grades comprise a probability distribution or histogram of possible block grades. And so we look at those simulated block grades above cutoff and we can interpret those directly as the proportion of tons, that's the tons in a block, above cutoff grade. The average grade of those simulated block grades above cutoff is an estimate of the grade above cutoff. Now, if we want a global uh, estimate of tons and grade above cutoff, we can get that by computing a weighted average of the corresponding block values above cutoff. The algorithm that we use to simulate these block values is based on the LU decomposition of the covariance matrix and is theoretically sound. There's no hocus pocus here. If you would like more information on the theoretical development of this method, see my paper titled The Oxymoron. And note also that the multi-Gaussian Krieging can be combined with local anisotropy Krieging. Multi-Gaussian Krieging works just like any other Krieging program in that it does a local search for samples to use to estimate or simulate a block grade. So in other words, I have a version of multi-Gaussian Krieging that uses local anisotropy search neighborhoods to find the sample it uses for each block. So if you would like more information on this, please contact me at ed at isaacs.com or give me a call 650-369-7069. I look forward to working with you. Thank you.